Hey, MS Insight. How's everybody doing today? Well, we are back today with another MS Warrior interview, and I'm so excited to bring with bring it to you today. We're going to be speaking with Danielle. Um, you know, we love doing these interviews just to bring the community together and make sure that people feel a sense of solidarity and encouragement and can see themselves in the stories of other people. Um, before Danielle joins us, I'll just make a fun little announcement, which is that our Private Facebook support community is now over 3,000 people. I think we're close to like 3,300. So if you haven't joined our community on Facebook, we would love you um, to do so. I can leave the link on the video after this, but um, if you just search multiple sclerosis patient support group, um, it should pop up in Facebook groups. So um, we'd love to have you there. We like all the voices that we can get. We've got a lot of new people. Um, that sort of, this seems to be a sort of a trend of the MSN site community is people with really new diagnoses. Like I'm talking day of, week of, people that are really just looking for some uh, inspiration, some advice, some encouragement. And that's sort of what we want to do here today with this interview. Uh, Danielle, I see that you've joined the video and I hope that you can request to join uh, let's see here. I think I can request you actually. It's not your request. So if you accept that, then we can get that. Oh, hey. Hi. <laughs> that was fast. <laughs> How's it going? Good. How are you? Good. Well, thank you so much for doing this interview with us today. Uh, we have this regular series going and um, we just love to talk with patients about their um, individual stories. So can you just kick us off by telling us a little bit about who you are and um, sort of your background with MS? Yeah, of course. Um, so my name is Danielle. Um, I was diagnosed back in 2016. I, leading up to that, I had various issues. One thing that was bothering me the most was I had um, like loss of eye control. Uh, so I was going to the eye doctor back and forth, thought I was going to have to have eye surgery. Um, other little things that led up to it, I had numbness on my arms, and I was just, I thought it was fiberglass or something. So mm -hmm. I kind of just brushed it off. Um, I was getting really hypersensitive on my legs. Um, I lived at the beach, so every time I would go in the water, I just, it felt like pins and needles. Mm -hmm. And I just didn't know why. Um I had migraines that kept going persistently. Um, ultimately, what really triggered um, me to seek help was I was training for my first full marathon, and I just felt really sluggish, um, decided to only do a half marathon. Uh, during the race, uh, my foot I got foot drop, and so I fell. I ended up finishing the race, um, but I was, like, so mad because – it just obviously ruined my time. I was really discouraged. Um, I still didn't realize that it was something serious. So I thought it was a physical injury. Um, I was going to physical therapy. I was going to the doctor. Um, they sent me to a physical therapist. Um, they couldn't figure out what was wrong. Um, and then one day, like, I woke up and I couldn't walk. Um, like, my legs were – I couldn't even stand up on them. So I ended up going to the hospital – and um, that's when they did the MRIs and the spinal taps. And at that time is when I was diagnosed with MS. Um, and the neurologist at the time, um, I, sorry, um, I was so, I had another race coming up. So I was really, really, I still, I don't think I was understanding like what was going on. And I just wanted to fix it. And I was like, you know, what can you do to fix this? Because I have a race coming up in a couple of weeks and I need to be ready. And the doctor told me, to me like, you're not going to be able to run again. Mm. And I was devastated. I was absolutely devastated. Um, so at that point is when, you know, I, I'd started doing my own research and went from there. Um, I got a new, um, I ended up ultimately getting like a new neurologist, um, who's kind of set me up, um, and I'm running still today, um, but that's kind of my beginning, 
um, stages with the MS. So that's interesting that the one doctor would tell you that you're never going to be able to run again when clearly you have been able to run. Yes. Again. So <laughs> what are your thoughts about that now? Because like, that's, that's a huge bomb to drop on someone for especially for it to not be true. Yes. Um, you know, always get a second opinion. Uh, for sure, when you know, you're someone's telling you that. Um, but everyone's human, the doctors are humans, they don't know, you know, and everyone's different. And so maybe they had a, um, a different experiment experience with uh, MS patients. But you know, like the research says is all MS patients are different. And everyone has different symptoms. And no one knows what you're going through and what you're capable of. So if I, I don't feel that the doctor had the right to ever say that to me. Um, and no one knows yourself more than you do. And I know that I knew at that time that that doctor was wrong. And I looked at him like he was crazy. Um, cause like, there's no way that's, that's going to be true. Um, so I've just, you know, from that moment on, I made it my goal to, you know, train even harder and eat healthier and, um, never give up because I, a body emotion stays in motion, and I truly, truly believe that. So I've definitely changed. You know, I was eating healthier before, but, you know, just going to, like, a strict diet, um, you know, really just staying active and healthy has tremendously helped me. Um, it took me a while to find a new neurologist, but I was actually getting my, my nails done one day, and I was telling my nail lady about, what had happened and I told him you know I was so scared because they said I was never gonna be able to run and she knew how active I was and her sister was recently diagnosed and had a neurologist that she used and she referred me to him and thankfully they were in my insurance so they were able to go see him and he he's been a godsend and he's been so helpful um he told me that that doctor was completely wrong, um, that he's going to get me on a, a program or, you know, medication that's going to help. Um, the original medicine that she prescribed originally, I, I do not recommend to anyone. They might have different effects on them, but for me, it was a really traumatic experience. Mm -hmm. And so did you try different medications after that? I did. So the first medication I had was a injection. So I had to inject me, uh, do a shot um, every other day um, throughout the body. And those shots just made me feel like I had the flu. Um, my bones hurt, my body hurt. I literally would give myself the, the shot and then I'd have to go and just sit in the bathtub because I just felt so weak and horrible. It it was horrible. I hated it. I cried just taking it. I did not want, I did not like the medication. Um, I, I finally let the doctor know, like, you know, I can't do this medication. It's not working for me. She got me on a, a smaller dose, uh, um, a pill, but it wasn't working enough. And I kept having a bunch of relapses. Um, I was on that for until I met my new neurologist and I've been on a infusion every six months um, ever since, uh, Rituximab. Um, I actually haven't had an infusion since 2019 because of COVID. Uh, so I haven't done any infusions and I've just been really sticking to like um, a more holistic approach and just working on my diet and staying active. Um, I am in the process of deciding if I'm going to go get an infusion or not uh, with my doctor. We're actually discussing that uh, later tomorrow at our appointment. So um, but as of right now, I haven't taken any medication in uh, two years and I haven't had any uh, relapses besides like the current symptoms that I already have. So what, what are the current symptoms that you have? The biggest one for me that bothers me is I get foot drop every time I run. So when, once my car, my core heats up, um, probably, you know, like anything over, like if it's really hot, um, I live in Southern California, so it's 90 something degrees right now. And 
um, I'll get foot drop if it's really hot or if I'm just running like a longer distance. Uh, as soon as I cool down, it goes away. Um, the other one that bothers me is I get really sleepy um, towards like the evenings and my eyes. Um, I just can't keep them open. Like I have a lazy eye. So I kind of lose control of that. Um, I have numbness and like tingling um, occasionally. Uh, but the two major ones are my eyes and my foot drop and then just being tired. Um, I drink a lot of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> So it helps, um, but I just get really tired. And all my friends know that if they're going to plan something, to plan it early enough because <laughs> I go to bed like a grandma. <laughs> yeah. Um, so how do you, you – you said that you do a holistic, more holistic approach. So what are some of the things that you do in that regard? Uh, the MS Best Bet Diet. Uh, so I try to stay away from anything that's going to – any foods that are going to cause – inflammation, um, take anti-inflammatories, uh, I take turmeric um, on a regular basis, uh, vitamin B12. Um, I do take uh, CBD oil um, every day um, and then making sure I stay away from, you know, dairy, um, high inflammatory foods, anything processed. So try to stick more of a paleo diet um, and then I move. I've, you know, made a promise to myself to move at least 20 to 30 minutes a day. Um, even if I'm having like a super bad day, I'll still just get up and, and move, um, just to keep my body going. And it keeps me motivated uh, to stay active. And so, uh, sorry, how many years ago was it that you got your diagnosis? 2016. So five years. Okay. And so since that time, what are some of the physical things you've been able to do? Like you've continued in your fitness journey and all the things. So have you been able to run races and that kind of a thing? I, I still run races. Um, my, so after about six to eight miles, when I'm running the, I still haven't done a full marathon. It's definitely like my goal. Like my dream was, so when I first uh, was training for my first full marathon, um, I was trying to qualify for the Boston. That's like my dream. But um, I had to do, I changed it to do the half. And I physically don't think I'll be able to do a full marathon. I'm sure I could. And I still want to. I'm still keeping it in the back of my mind. But after about six to eight miles, I get the foot drop. So I get so frustrated. Um, I still finish. But I'm just like, you know, really frustrated about it because I know condition wise, I'm ready. I'm ready to run. I, I've been training for it. Um, my heart, my cardio is fine, but just this darn foot <laughs> just doesn't allow me to. Um, so I, I just have to overcome, like, this is what I can do and still do it. Um, you know, instead of getting PRs on my races, I'm just, you know, going to finish them, but it's still something to be proud of, and I'm still doing it. I do CrossFit, um, so I compete in CrossFit competitions, and um, I work with, um, I volunteer with some MS groups locally around here, and I just try to encourage them to, you know, stay active, and I'll do, like, hiking um, outings with um, some of the uh, friends locally here, and I just think I really like to encourage others to make sure that they never give up. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite thing to do in CrossFit? Um, back squats. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I love CrossFit too. So <laughs> I had to ask, had to ask. Yes. Um, so what, what's something you would say you've learned over the past five years? Like, you know, this was something you didn't expect, but you've had to deal with. Um, so what has it taught you and, um, you know, how have you been able to use it in a positive way? It's really helped me help and encourage others. And I think that's like the biggest thing is I had to learn myself, um, how to, how to, when we're given a, you know, an, a roadblock, you know, how to overcome those challenges. And I think the biggest thing that like my dad told me is, <laughs> sorry. Hey. <laughs> um, 
it's going to be a challenge, but I can do, I can overcome it. And we're just going to adjust. I can still get to those goals and what I wanted to do in life. And I'm not going to let the MS dictate my future. I'm going to figure out a solution, even if I have to alter something or, you know, make it possible. I'm still going to, you know, have my career and I'm still going to, you know, have a family and and kids and I'm still going to do all that. I just, you know, I might have to make alterations to, to my plan. Um, Mm -hmm. So what I help, you know, a lot of people that are newly diagnosed or people that just reach out to me because I'm just kind of like, I try to be a positive light in the community. And I just tell them like, don't let it dictate your future, you know, never give up. Don't let someone tell you that you can't do something because you can, you will, and you can do it. You just might have to try a different plan, go to plan B, but you're still going to get there. There's more ways to do something. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, that's so great. You know, there's always a plan B and a plan C and, um, even writing it down, like, you know, even envisioning what those could be to, you know, help yourself know that they're there. So um, I think that's, that's such a good point. Um, Now, a lot of people in our community are very new, like even day of week of diagnosis, what's some words of encouragement or what words of advice might you want to give someone that is just stepping into all this? It's okay to be scared. And it's okay um, to not to not be sure you know what's going on you're it's a it's a learning curve and you're gonna learn how your body is you know everyone's different everyone's gonna have different symptoms and you're gonna learn like you know what you can do and what you can't do and for things that you can do you can find out a different way to do them Um, but don't be scared don't be afraid to reach out to someone that has MS that's been through it and can share, you know, different resources or different things that has helped them. Um, reach out to as many people as you can to get get advice. Um, but do your own research too, and know what is going to be good for your body because everyone's different and everyone's approach, um, everyone's journey is going to be different than someone else's. Like what works for me might not work for someone else. But one thing I truly believe is being active and healthy and really dying in your nutrition, I think plays a huge factor. Um, I can tell like if I go and I have, you know, ice cream, I, I'm not going to be able to, you know, train as hard the next day and I'm going to be feel so inflamed. I, every single time. So, um, food, inflammatory foods do play a huge part. And I know it, I'm not going to be perfect at my nutrition. I don't expect anyone else to be. Uh, but, you know, if you're consistent on a daily basis, your body's going to react to that. Yeah. And there's so many resources out there to learn about those inflammatory foods. And so much of it is really just habit making. It's mm-hmm. just kind of changing things up and then getting used to it. And then you don't even think about, uh, you know, some of the junk that you used to eat. Yes. And- you know what your body needs and what it needs to function best. And so it's hard switch to make for people, but um, I think you and some other people that we've talked to like really make a great case for like, this matters. This is important. It can really help your quality of life. Yeah. And it's like, so I'm a huge ice cream fan. (laughs) So (laughs) me too. (laughs) So uh, instead I freeze bananas and I'll make a nice cream it's called and you can customize it and do like chocolate protein powder with it but it's one of my favorite treats to have if I don't have real ice cream that's a good idea see and there's probably a whole bunch more of those out there that we could <laughs> compile we should do a recipe book <laughs> yes <laughs> well Danielle thank you so much for sharing your story and just like being vulnerable with us and Um, We just really appreciate it and want to keep following your journey. And if you're watching this now or later, um, you know, follow Danielle and um, send her a word of encouragement. And um, thanks, everyone, for being here today. And until next time, um, we'll see you then. All right. Bye. Thank you so much. Good luck. Bye.